All right, this is the last little bit uh, for your reporting category three. Those are your yellow papers. This one is 8.7a about seasons. Um, I'm, not, I'm just reminding you one more time. If the uh, hemisphere is pointed or kind of tipped more towards the sun, they're having um, summer, and the one that's pointed kind of away is having winter. So for instance, if the sunlight's coming in from the left, like it is here, the southern hemisphere is having summertime, according to this diagram, and the northern hemisphere is having winter. Okay, so it's the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere, and it's the first day of summer if you're looking at the southern hemisphere. Okay, if your diagram looks like this, and the boundary between daylight and darkness basically runs from pole to pole, it's the first day of spring for one of your hemispheres and the first day of fall for your other hemisphere. Okay. All right. If it's the northern hemisphere that's tipped into the sunlight, then the northern hemisphere is having summer. Uh, southern hemisphere would be having winter at that time. Okay. And then again, if the boundary between day and night goes from pole to pole, you're at an equinox. Equinox, remember, every... Every, everybody everywhere pretty much is having 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of darkness. So that happens the first day of fall and the first day of spring. Okay. Also, one more reminder. In the northern hemisphere, if we're having summer, then the southern hemisphere is doing just the opposite. And the opposite of summer is winter. Um, if we're having spring, they're having fall, etc. Okay. So... The hemisphere tipped towards the sun is having long days and short nights, and they're having summer. The hemisphere tipped away from the sun is having short days and long nights, and they're having winter. All right, a couple of hints about lunar phases. First of all, the entire lunar cycle is about 29 and a half days or about a month, okay? Um, even though 50% of the moon is always illuminated, the side that faces the sun, how much of that we see depends on the angle between the sun, earth, and moon. Okay, if what we're seeing is 0% illuminated, then that's a new moon. And it's in the same area of the sky, and it's going to rise and set with the sun. Anything that's less than 50% illuminated when we look at it is a crescent. If it's exactly 50%, it's either a first or last quarter. If, what, <clears throat> if the side that we're looking at is more than 50% illuminated, then it's a gibbous. And then if it's the side facing us is 100% illuminated, then that's a full moon, okay? Full moons rise at sunset. New moons rise and set with the sun, okay? You will have to understand your lunar phase diagrams, okay? They're here, but I'm also going to show you uh, the simulation that we used earlier this year just to kind of shake the cobwebs off. Okay, we have the sun... Over here on the left, here's the moon, here's the earth. Right now, the moon is directly in between the sun and the earth, and you notice it's a new moon. Okay. Then, as the angle changes, remember we always go counterclockwise. As the angle changes, we're going to go through waxing cres crescent. Okay, from here to here, it takes about a week. Okay, remember that a quarter of a circle is about 90 degrees. I didn't stop it quite right. But that's basically a first quarter because you're a quarter of the way through your cycle. That takes about seven or eight days from new to first quarter. Play this a little faster. All right, wow. Now it's waxing gibbous because waxing means it's getting bigger each night. Now it's full. Okay. And now the angle starts to close up, and we're waning. Waning gibbous. See, look over here. Anything waning is going to be lit on the left-hand side. Anything waxing is going to be lit on the right-hand side. Okay. So waning. Last quarter or third quarter. Remember, because we're three quarters of the way through the cycle. And now we're less than 50% illuminated. See, only 26%. Uh, and this is a crescent. And it's getting less and less each night, so it's a waning crescent. 
all the way back till we hit new again. Okay, that's going to take eh, about a month. Okay, while I find my last little sheet, I want to remind you one more time about something important about the seasons. Remember that the distance that the Earth is from the Sun does not determine the seasons. It's the tilt of the Earth on its axis that gives us our seasons. Okay, now we're going to take one last look at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Remember that we have a diagonal band from hot and bright down to cool and dim. This diagonal band is known as the main sequence. Stars that sit in the main sequence are kind of living the main part of their life. They are fusing hydrogen. The Sun is a main sequence star right now. Up in the top right where stars are bright but not all that hot, those are your giants. Down towards the bottom where stars are really hot but not bright because the stars are really small, those are your white dwarfs. Okay, um, so main part of your life, main sequence. Okay, hot but cool, those are giants. Dim but hot, those are your white dwarfs. Okay, things that are brighter are going to be found high up. Things that are dimmer are going to be found low down. Stars that are cool are going to be found further to the right. Stars that are hot are going to be found further to the left. I'm now looking just real quickly at some of the hints about topographic maps. Number one, uh, a contour line is the line showing uh, a particular elevation on a topographic map. And we can figure out how much the elevation is changing. Um, that is called a contour interval. So on this particular map that you have um, on one of your yellow sheets, this index contour line, which is darker, says 3,900. Um, if I go over to this next dark contour line and call it, follow it around, it says 4,000. So this one's 3,900 and this one's 4,000. And I have to hop one, two, three, four, five times to get from 3,900 to 4,000. Okay, well, 3,900 from 4,000, that's 100. And then it took me five hops to get there. So 100 divided by 5, the contour interval on this particular map is 20. I'm going to assume it's 20 feet, but it's 20, okay? Areas that don't have a whole lot of lines are flat. Areas where the lines are really spaced, like are really close together, that indicates somewhere that's steep, either a steep cliff, a steep drop-off, something like that, okay? And if you have a little stream or a river, contour lines will kind of kink and the kinks sort of point you uphill. 